Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the January 2024 Pure Mathematics P3 exam. And here we have a question involving um, modeling using exponentials. Um, so it says the temperature T Celsius of the air in a room T minutes after the heat after a heat source is switched off is modeled by the equation T equals 10 plus A times E to the power of negative BT. Of course, the time is going, as time goes on, the temperature will decrease. So capital T is the temperature, small t is the time in minutes. And um, as time goes on, this shows like a, a model that decreases. A and B are constants. Given that the temperature of the air in the room at the instant that the heat source was switched off was 18 degrees, find the value of A. So what they're trying to tell us, when the time was zero, so small t is zero, the temperature is 18. So capital T is 18 degrees Celsius. No, we don't have to put the degree Celsius there. Just need to put 18 there. So we want to find the value of A first. So we can replace the capital T with 18. And we can replace the small t with 0. Okay, so you end up with 18 equals 10 plus A times E to the power of 0. We know that E to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So you have 18 equals 10 plus A times 1, which is A. So therefore, we can say A is equal to 18 minus 10. So therefore, A is equal to 8. So now we know the value of this A here. So we can say T is equal to 10 plus 8 times E to the power of minus BT. So that's what we've got um, up to now. We don't have to write this down. I'm doing that for the, for the next part of the question. We have this so far. So that's the answer to part A. We found the value of A. Now it says, given also that exactly 45 minutes after the heat source was switched off, so again, T is in minutes, so that's right, T is 45, the temperature in the air in the room, of the air in the room was 16 degrees Celsius. So they're telling us when, the, when small t is 45, capital T, the temperature is 16. So we can now put these in the equation and we should be able to find the value of B. So uh, 16, capital T, equals 10 plus 8 times E to the power of negative B times 45. Okay, so now we can try to find what B is. So that's going to be 16 minus 10, which is 6, equals 8 E to the power of minus 45 B. So 6 over 8 equals E to the power of minus 45 B, which is 3 quarters. Okay, so I can say e to the power of minus 45b is equal to 3 over 4. Now, I personally like to do the next step in the following way. I like to make this as a positive power. I don't know why, I just prefer to do that. I always do that. So I'm going to write this as e to the power of capital of a positive 45b. And if I write this, this is the reciprocal of that, of course, because this is actually 1 over 45, 1 over e to the power of 45b. So you can write it as e to the power of 45b without the minus sign. Okay, so um, this is actually, you know, 1 over e to the power of 45b, all right? So its reciprocal would be this. That would be the reciprocal of this, okay? So I, if I write the reciprocal of this, I must write the reciprocal of that also. So the reciprocal of this equals the reciprocal of that, basically, all right? So now, when you've got it in this form, we can now try to find what b is. b is trapped inside the prison of the power of e. It's in the power of e. We want to get rid of it, so we have to take log to the base e which is called lin of both sides okay that will help to release it from the power in the easiest way and so i'll take lin of the other side and then i can um use the power law so i can say 45 b is equal to now 45 b times lin e lin e is one because log to the base e of e is one that's the reason why we chose to take log to the base e to make this happen here so 45 b is equal to lin of four over three does it say find the exact value? No, three significant figures. So we can carry on here. We can say B is equal to 1 over 45 times, I said 45 and I wrote 14. 1 over 45 times the lin of 4 over 3. So then we can write this and find out what it is as a decimal. If it said exact, we'd leave it like that. But it doesn't, so we should do this and round it to, to, round it to how many? 
to three significant figures in the end. So 145 times the ln of 4 over 3. Okay, and that gives us um, 6.392 times 10 to the power of minus 3. We can write this as 0, 0.0, that's going to be 0, 06, 1, 2, 3, that's right, um, 3929. Okay, 3SF would be B equals 0 0.00639. So that's the value of B. So we found the value of B and the value of A. Okay, so that's the answer to that one. Now for part C. It says, using the values for A and B, find according to the model, the rate of change of the temperature of the air in the room exactly two minutes after the heat source was switched off. So we have T equals 10 plus 8 times E to the power of negative. Now I'm going to write this in this exact form in the question, in the uh, you know steps. So I'll write um, negative lin 4 over 3 divided by 45. Then 4 over 3 divided by 45. I'll write it like that times t. Okay, now we want to differentiate this. Why? Because we want to find the rate of change of temperature. Okay, that means the rate with respect to time. So they want to find the capital T, the small t, the t dt. Now the 10 is going to become 0. Now when you differentiate e to the power of x, for example, with respect to x, it's going to stay as e to the power of x. If it was e to the power of kx, okay, then you multiply by the differential force inside the function. So similarly here, the 10 becomes 0. This stays as 8 times e to the power of negative lin 4 over 3 divided by 45 t. But then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Now what's inside the function is e to the power, of, what's inside the function is minus lin 43 over 4 over 3 divided by 45 t okay so if you if you differentiate that you get negative lin for three over 45 that's the constant times t that's that's what's left when you differentiate like if i had four times t i would multiply by four but minus three times t i'd multiply by minus three i have minus lin four over three over 45 times t i multiply that by whatever that is okay so that gives us dt dt is equal to um, negative 8 lin 4 over 3 over 45 okay times e to the power negative lin 4 over 3 over 45 times or to the times t okay so now we want to find dt dt when time is two minutes so we're going to put t small t equals 2 so when t equals 2 the rate of change when t equals 2 is going to be minus 8 lin 4 over 3 divided by 45 times e to the power of negative lin 4 over 3 over 45 times 2. Okay, what does that give us? So I've, I will store this as a. That's now a in my calculator. So now this minus 8 times a, so I have minus 8 times a. That's 8 minus 8a. Eight That's minus 8 times lin 4 over 3 over 45. Okay. Multiplied by e to the power of negative 2a. Negative 2a. Okay. That's going to give us exactly all of this because I've stored negative, I've stored negative lin 4 over 3 over 45. Okay, oh, oh sorry, I've restored lin 4 over 3 over 45 in here, so that's minus 2 times that. Okay, so that should give us our answer, which is negative 0 0.05049, negative 0 0.0505, what was it? 049, 37, so to three significant figures, 1, 2, hold on, 0, 0504. Sorry, that's a mistake there. I wrote too many zeros there. 
zero five zero uh, four and then you have nine three seven nine three seven so if you want to stop at three significant figures the first significant figure is the first non-zero number which is five that's the second that's the third if there's a zero zero between non-zero numbers that is significant that becomes therefore we say that's negative zero point zero five zero five and this is in celsius per minute okay so that is dt dt 0 0.0505 celsius per minute okay so that's the answer to put per per either i put the sign or i put the slash or i put minute we'll leave it like this because that's how they're told us to write it so there's the answer to part c of this question now for part d it says explain why according to the model the temperature of the air in the room cannot fall to five degrees celsius so as we can see here we have this exponential decay type of situation right and we can see that the temperature is going to fall but it's going to fall to a certain temperature okay and the temperature will be like an asymptote um, and we can algebraically determine what that's going to be if we write this as t equals 10 plus 8 over e to the power of lin 4 over 3 over 45 times t now if we take t and we say let that become infinitely large really huge number that will tell us what happens to the temperature as the time goes on and on now if time becomes infinitely large then e to the power of lin 4 over 3 over 45 times t will also become infinitely large of course because e to the power of something is going to be really big and if you have 8 divided by something really big, that's going to become, basically, it's going to tend towards 0. That's going to become really, really small. So the temperature is going to tend towards 10 degrees as, as T tends towards, the time tends towards infinity. As the time gets really big, the temperature is going to get closer and closer to 10. That means the temperature will never, ever go below 10. So we say that the temperature, the temperature will never drop, okay, to below 10 degrees Celsius. Therefore, for that reason, of course, it will never fall to four, to five, sorry. It will never, therefore it will never fall to five celsius okay they could have put any number less than 10 it wouldn't reach that okay and if you were to think about the graph of this just so you can picture it okay if we have t equals you don't have to draw this of course but just just to show you uh, eight to the power eight e to the power of negative lin four over three over 45 times c now i'm going to show you also like algebraically how we can work this out okay um we could, let me just remember, I forgot now. What did we call A? Yeah, A was, I think, this, right? It was lin 4 over 3 over 45. Let's just do it in case. Lin 4 over 3 over 45. Yeah, that gives us that value there, which I think that was A. Was that A? Yeah, okay, so that's our A. So if I was to put um, 10 plus 8 times E to the power of A, okay, um, times T. So if I put times a really big number, like let's, let's, let's start with, say, 1,000. Okay, big number. You'll see when you press that. Oops, what's going on? What's happening here? Ah, oh, to the power of negative. My bad, it's supposed to be negative. All right. You see it's getting close to 10. I can make this even bigger. Add another, a few zeros to there. You'll see it's going to tend towards 10. So if you put a really big number here instead of T, you set it up with a big number instead of T, it will tell you what the limit is. But we can see algebraically how it's going to get to 10. I can also show you algebraically. 
um, graphically how it goes to 10. So let's start with e to the power of t. Okay, how does e to the power of t look? So we're going to do the transformations of this function, um, you know, bit by bit, and you'll see how it ends up as it, showing that um, asymptote. Okay, so e to the power of t is going to be something that looks like this. Okay, that's going to be 1. That's going to be uh, temperature, that's going to be time. Okay, that's e to the power of t. The first transformation is inside the function. It's going to be where you have multiplied by minus lin 4 over 3 over 45. Now that causes a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, the minus causes reflection in the y-axis. And what does this cause? It doesn't cause any of the uh, y-coordinates change, just x-coordinates change. So it's going to become slightly different, like in terms, it will be a horizontal stretch of factor lin 4 over 3 over 45. Okay, so it's going to basically be something which, um, for example, if it was a stretch factor, if it was a half t, you have a stretch factor of 2. So it's going to be basically that's that remember that that's a that's a fraction that's quite small so it's going to be a bit more kind of like um stretched out so oops it won't reach the origin it won't reach uh, the x axis or the t axis it's going to get closer and closer to it like an asymptote so that's after that first transformation so i'll get rid of the the other part here okay so that's how it's going to look after that first part then it's going to be multiplied by 8 which is a vertical stretch. So then it's going to be like a bit higher up like this, on this side, a bit lower down on that side, and so on. So, you know, we can we can still draw it in the same way. So I'll just I'll just get rid of this. So a vertical stretch is going to go up to eight on the y-axis, because vertical stretch, and it's going to be something like this. It's going to stretch vertically. That's this part here. Then it's going to raise up by 10 units, so it's going to end up at 18. So the whole thing will, will raise up by 10 units and it's going to end up at 18 okay so basically of course this side won't exist of course this side won't exist because let me just um bring it down here so i can erase that without erasing the writing okay because time can't be uh, negative so it's going to start from there and it's going to look something like this okay and the asymptote which was over here the original asymptote, which was over here, which I'll draw like this. Okay. What happens to it under this transformation? Nothing. It just affects the x-coordinates. What happens under this transformation? Nothing. Why? Because if you stretch vertically something, it's y equals 0. You know, you multiply 0 by 8, it won't change. But the last transformation is a vertical trans translation of, fa of, of 10 units upwards. It's going to move up 10 units. So you're going to end up with an asymptote at you know in this case is going to be capital t equals 10 okay so you'll see that this is getting closer and closer to 10 without reaching it so you can see graphically how it works now this is only worth one mark so of course all this explanation is not really needed by you even if um you know you just put this in your calculator and you deduce that you know uh, you know it's that 10 is going to be the lowest it can ever reach or it's, you know that's going to be the limit that it can it might it will it will re reach as time becomes infinite and you mentioned the temperature will never never drop to below 10 degrees celsius therefore it won't, re won't reach five that's fine if you show these steps it's even better show the fact that you know as the time gets bigger okay then this term becomes closer to zero therefore the temperature reaches or it has a limit towards 10 okay as the time goes towards infinity Okay, so that it will never drop below 10 degrees, therefore it can't ever reach 5 degrees. Okay, so there's your answer to this question, question number part, uh, this is question number 5. And other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here in this region here. If you want to find other questions dealing with, um, you know, logarithms and exponentials from P3 over here, this playlist will specifically deal with modeling questions like this. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.